Hey, super learners. We are going to read about one of my all-time favorite characters. Maybe he's one of your favorites, too. Do you know who we're talking about? Oh, yeah. Curious George. And if you look on the cover, um, use your good-looking eyes. Ooh, what do you think Curious George is getting into? Yep, he's helping out with some apples. I wonder what's going to happen. The title or name of this book is Curious George, Apple Harvest. And it is written and illustrated by H.A. Ray. So here we go. Curious George, Apple Harvest. It was harvest time and Mr. Rankins needed help picking his apples. George and his friend, the man with the yellow hat, were happy to lend a hand <laughs> or foot because <laughs> monkeys have hands that or feet that look like hands. Mr. Rankins explained that they needed to collect every apple. I'm going to the join the missus round back, he said. Once you fill that cart, you can unload it into the washing trough. That's this part over here where they're going to wash the apples. Mr. Rankins took his cart full of apples to the barn and dumped them into the water. It must be their bath time, George thought. George climbed up the branches, collected the shiny red apples in his friend's hat, and put them into the cart. What fun! High up in the tree, he saw Jumpy Squirrel picking apples too. George decided to help. He took Jumpy's apple and tossed it into the cart with the rest of Mr. Rankin's apples. But Jumpy wanted that apple for him. Oh, for himself, sorry. He leaped in to take it back, and George tried to stop him. Hmm. All right, let's see if we can make a prediction. Remember, a prediction is a really good guess. So George tried to stop Jumpy from getting his apple. What do you think will happen next? Ooh, those are some good predictions. Let's see. Easy now, George. That lever releases all of the apples. This thing right here, said his friend. George looked at the lever. He thought it was an excellent way to get Jumpy out of the cart. George, no! George pulled the lever and Jumpy tumbled out along with all of the apples. That's okay, said his friend with a sigh. We can gather them up again. But Jumpy had found his apple and he ran to hide it in the barn. George, being curious, decided to follow. George looked around the inside of the barn in wonder. There are all sorts of things to climb on and swing from. It must be some kind of monkey playground. But George was not here to play. He had to get that apple from Jumpy. If only it weren't so dark in the barn. He found the light switch and flipped it. Hmm. I wonder which one he flipped. The white one that's probably for the lights or red for something else. Hmm. Let's see. Everything moved. It was a machine, not a playground. George wondered how it worked. He watched the buckets scoop up the apples. He decided they must carry the apples high away from squirrels. But wait, where was Jumpy? 
There he was. Jumpy still had the apple he took from the cart. George chased Jumpy, grabbed the apple, and threw it into a bin high out of reach. Suddenly, the machine stopped. Hmm. George found a bu button and pushed. The machine started again. This time, all of the parts started working, including the moving belt. But when he looked up, he saw all of the Rankins' beautiful apples being chopped to bits. The chopped up apples dropped into a giant barrel and a lid was lowered tightly on top of them. Too tightly, liquid began to pour out of the barrel. Ugh, what a mess. George had an idea. He ran up and put his mouth under the liquid. It tasted good, mmm, a lot like apples, but there was too much of it. Luckily, he saw some empty containers. Those are those glass jugs right here. George scrambled to put the containers on the moving belt as fast enough to catch fast enough to catch the liquid. Then he looked down at the end of the belt and saw the containers falling onto the floor. Uh-oh. George ran to catch them. Then he needed to stop the machine. Oh man, everything's going so fast. Soon he had filled all the containers, but the golden liquid continued to pour out. He looked around for another container and saw a big pair of rubber boots. <gasps> oh, yuck. As the last boot was filled, the liquid stopped pouring out and the machine stopped. Whew! The farmer's and George's friend appeared in the doorway. Well, I'll be, Mr. Rankins exclaimed. George froze. The Rankinses would surely be upset that he ruined all of their apples. George, Mrs. Rankin, oh, excuse me, George, Mrs. Rankins rushed up to him. You've done a fantastic job. All that cider already pressed and bottled. Thank you. So George thought he was doing something wrong, but it turns out he was actually helping. Did you make that prediction? Did you guess that he was getting just getting into trouble? Or did you guess that he was trying to help out but didn't know it? Yeah, I thought he was just getting into trouble like usual. Hmm. This is some machine, said the man with the yellow hat. See, the apples are washed here, Mrs. Rankins explained. Then they are lifted up to the chopper because chopped apples give more juice. The juice is pressed out of the apples and then bottled. George had not ruined the apples after all. He turned them into cider. Mr. Rankins handed an apple to George. Here, you've earned it, he said. George knew someone who wanted the apple more than he did. He'd had enough apples for one day. This page is assembly line. When George accidentally turned on the cider press, he learned how cider is made. In each step, a different part of the machine performs a specific task. And when all the tasks and steps are put together, the end result is bottled cider. This process is called an assembly line. Can you say that? Assembly line. Mm -hmm. Assembly lines allow companies to make their products faster, 
cheaper, and more evenly. If George had tried to do each step of the cider-making assembly line by himself, it would have taken a lot longer to fill all of those bottles of cider. Below are the tasks each part of the cider press machine performed to make cider. Can you put these steps in correct order? All right, so let's look at these pictures. We have the cider. We have apples being chopped into pieces. We have the lid going on nice and tight. We have the apples being washed. We have the apples going in the bin. And then we have them collecting the apples in the orchard. So what happens first? What was the first thing that happened in this story? Right, you can't do any of it without collecting apples first. So this picture down here at the bottom is the first thing. All right, um, so after they collected the apples, what happened next? Right, do you remember what Mr. Rankin said? Yep, just put them in the wash trough. That's where the wa apples get washed. So where is that picture? Is it on the top row or the bottom row? Yep, and is it, well, we already did this one, so we'll call this picture A or picture B. Yep, it would be picture A. Okay, so all the apples have been washed. Now what happens? Right, they get scooped up and taken to the top where they get chopped into little pieces. Which picture is that? We'll call this picture one, picture two, or picture three. Yeah, picture two. Remember, uh, Mrs. Rankins said that chopped apples give more juice. So they have to chop the apples. All right, what's the next step? Yep, remember the lid was put on and it was really tight, so tight that he couldn't open it. And that's where it started pressing so here's the next one. And then it started pressing all of the cider out. Yep, that's the last piece. Guess what? You just did something called sequence of events. Can you say that? Sequence of events. That's putting the story in order. Good job. <gasps> Apple stars. Did you know? that a star is hidden inside each and every apple. Next time you're having apple slices for a snack, ask a grown-up to cut the apple horizontally across the middle this way, instead of vertically from the stem to the base, which is what I did yesterday. Inside each apple half, you will find a star. Apple smiles. Mm. Cider isn't the only thing you can make out of apples. Apple pies, apple sauce, apple butter, and candied apples are just a few of the many treats that can be made with this delicious fruit. With the help of a grown-up, you can even make apple smiles. Here's how. So this is something you guys can do at home. We would normally do this in the classroom, but with what's going on right now, we can't really do that. So you will need two sliced red apples, peanut butter, which is my favorite, or cream cheese, also really tasty, and mini marshmallows. So looking at that, what do you think you're going to make? Right, you're going to make some apple smiles. So the directions. Step one, ask a grown-up to cut the red apples into slices. So it'll look like this part. Those are the lips. Spread peanut butter or cream cheese, I don't know that I would do both, on the top of two apple slices. Step three, place mini marshmallows, these are the teeth, on top of the peanut butter or cream cheese and top it with another apple slice. Then you've got some apple smiles. That's something fun you guys can try at home. And here are just some other 
Curious George stories. Well, I hope you enjoyed Curious George Apple Harvest, and I hope you learned something new and exciting about apples, and I will see you guys later. Toodaloo!